and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are still working on Henry V, which is good because we're only in Act 1, Scene 2, so if we'd given up already, then we would have failed in our mission to do all of the Shakespeare's. Um, Act 1, Scene 2. Today we get to hear from the Archbishop of Canterbury and from King Henry V, but King Henry V only has like a tiny little itty bitty line in between two monster monologues of the Bishop of Canterbury. So this will be the Bish Archbishop of Canterbury and this will be King Henry because kings wear beer hats. Um, <laughs> so what what's going on is at the um, the church is afraid that it's going to lose a lot of money if this particular bill passes, and King Henry has so since he became king is sort of running around and trying to figure out what lands and titles and things like that that um, are his that he hadn't really been paying attention to. So he currently has a. a be in his bonnet that tells him that he's supposed to be the king of France, um, but this law salic, which says that women cannot inherit titles from their parents, um, is preventing him. Like that's what the people in France are saying. They're saying because of the law salic that his claim to the French throne through his great grandfather Edward um, is not valid. So yesterday he called the Archbishop of Canterbury in because the French ambassador is standing outside and he was like, you know, tell me, is there, is there any merit to my claim? Because I don't want to go to war over this and have lots and lots of innocent people die if I don't have a legit claim on the throne of France. And the Archbishop of Canterbury replies, then hear me, gracious sovereign, and you peers, that owe yourselves, your lives, and services to this imperial throne. There is no bar to make against your highness claim to France, but this which they produce from Pharamond. In terum salicum mulieris ne secedant, no woman shall succeed in Salic land, which Salic land, the French unjustly glows to be the realm of France, and Pharamond, the founder of this law and female bar. Yet their own authors faithfully affirm that the land Salic is in Germany between the floods of Sala and Elve, where Charles the Great, having subdued the Saxons, they are left behind and settled certain French, who, holding in disdain the German women for some dishonest manners of their life, established then this law, to wit, no female should be inheritrix in Salic land, which Salic, as I said, to excel in Sala, is at this day in Germany called Maison. Then doth well appear, the Salic law was not devised for the realm of France, nor did the French possess the Salic land until 401 and 20 years after defunction of King Pharamond, idly supposed the founder of this law, who died within the year of our redemption, 426. And Charles the Great subdued the Saxons and did seat the French beyond the river Sala in the year 805. Besides, their writers say King Pepin, which deposed ch Childerlike, did as heir general, being descended of Blyfeld, who was daughter to King Clothair, make claim and title to the crown of France. Hugh Capet also, who usurped the crown of Charles the Duke of Lorraine, sole heir, sole heir male of the true line and stock of Charles the Great, to find his title and some shows of truth, though in pure truth it was corrupt and not, conveyed himself as the heir to the Lady Lingare, daughter to Charlemagne, who was the son to Louis the Emperor and Louis the son of Charles the Great. And also King Louis X, who was sole heir to the usurper Capet, could not keep quiet in his conscience wearing the crown of France till satisfied that fair Queen Isabel, his grandmother, was the lineal of the Lady Ermengarde, daughter to Charles of the fourth and Duke of Lorraine by the which marriage the line of Charles the Great was reunited to the crown of France. So, that as clear as is the summer's sun, King Pepin's title and Hugh Capet's claim, King Louis's satisfaction all appear to hold in right and title to the female. So do the kings of France unto this day. Howbeit they would hold up this Salic law to bar your highness claiming from the female and rather choose to hide them in a net than to amply than amply to embar their crooked titles usurped from you and your progenitors. May I with right and conscience make this claim? The sin upon my head, dread sovereign. For in the book of Numbers it is writ, When the man dies, let the inheritance descend unto the daughter. Gracious Lord, 
stand for your own. Unwind your bloody flag. Look back into your mighty ancestors. Go, my dread lord, to your great grandsire's tomb, from whom you claim. Invoke his warlike spirit and your great uncles, Edward the Black Prince, who on the French ground played a tragedy, making defeat on the full power of France, while his most mighty father on a hill stood smiling to behold his lion's whelp, forage and blood of French nobility. O oh, noble English, that could entertain with half their forces the full pride of France, and let another half stand laughing by, all out of work and cold for action. I warned you that was going to be a long one, and it is a long one, and it's full of names that I probably pronounced really, really wrong. It's full of names that I probably pronounced really, really wrong. Um, and a part of me just feels like the Archbishop of Canterbury did a lot of research on this, and part of me feels like he just wants to say a lot of words because it is in his best interest if Henry goes to war in France because then the church will get money again. Because that's what happened when wars happen. If England wins, they take a lot of money from France, which would probably then go to the church, especially if the Archbishop is the one who told King Henry that he was right and legit in going to war in the first place. So here we have, here we have a very long instance of a, a man of faith encouraging a king to go to war on the grounds that it's just, but really with ulterior motives. And we'll see how all of that turns out as the play progresses. Um, tomorrow, I think we get to hear from the king himself again, and then we get into some, we get into some really fun stuff. There's there's a very funny bit in this scene. At least I think it's a funny bit. Anyway, this video is getting way too long, and I will see you tomorrow for more Shakespeare. Mwah.